Hi, it's Jay, and you're watching DS Tech Media. In this video, we're going to be looking at installing the Corsair H100i version 2. It's a liquid CPU cooler. We're going to be installing that on this machine here. It's an AMD FX8350 CPU. It's 8 cores, 4.2 gigahertz, uh, no overclock. That's actually the turbo speed. Um, it's currently using the stock Cooler Master fan and heatsink. Uh, it has never been apart since it was built about four years ago. Uh, it was mostly used for gaming as a Windows machine, but uh, now it's running Linux. Not sure uh, why we're getting high temps uh, currently. This particular CPU's temperature junction is uh, 87.9 degrees Celsius, which is it's pretty hot. Um, and it, it's had at least six thermal shutdowns. Uh, usually if we're doing uh, prolonged video editing, prolonged capture like, like I'm doing right now, or even prolonged video gaming on Linux. Um, so we're going to install this. I picked it up at uh, Best Buy for $130, not a bad deal, and we're going to see uh, how low we can get the temps. So this is the machine that I'm recording on right now, so we're going to have to move over to the laptop. First step is to unplug the CPU fan. Then we're going to remove the screws with the actual heatsink mounts from the motherboard. It still has the stock fan and heatsink from Cooler Master. Next up I'm going to clean the thermal paste off the CPU because it's old and dried and no longer usable. So I'm removing the CPU, wiping off the paste, and even using a little bit of compressed air to blow off the debris from the motherboard. And this is the actual CPU itself, nice and clean. With the CPU and socket clean, we can now gently lay the 942 tiny gold pins back into place and clamp down the fastener. Now I'll install the AMD specific standoffs. They mount to the motherboard through the metal plate on the back side, as shown here. Next, I'm going to place the unit in position without actually mounting it. I've already removed a single 140mm NZXT case fan which was previously installed in the top vent location. The best placement for fans and radiator is actually a highly debated topic. The leading configurations being top back mounted or bottom front, either intake or exhaust. In my case, it only allows for a top back mounting position, so it doesn't really matter. Now I'm mounting the two 120mm Corsair fans. And the larger 140mm fan they've replaced is now mounted at the front of the case as an intake fan. 
since the radiator has to be mounted to the outside of the metal chassis with the fans being mounted on the inside. When everything's done, the top plastic panel will be placed over the externally mounted radiator. At this point, we must change the mounting bracket that came pre-installed on the unit from the Intel one to the AMD bracket. This bracket supports both AM3 Plus and AM4 Plus. Moving the Intel bracket was actually pretty tricky. It was on pretty tight. With all that done, I carefully bend and position the mounting point and tubing so that I can press the cold plate down decisively to ensure good contact with the thermal paste and plate onto the CPU die. Before we can actually make contact, it's a good idea to make sure I have the tools and four screws nearby and available so I can keep slight pressure applied with one hand at all times. For this I'm actually using a tiny battery powered screwdriver that operates off of a single AA battery and even has the flashlight built in. This is good for use with small hardware typically found in computers and you can pick it up from Walmart for about 15 bucks. And now it's just a matter of tightening four screws but not too tight. We're going to plug in the fans and the Corsair Link micro USB connector and now it's just cable management. And here it is all put back together. It's time to boot it up and find out how much of a difference the Corsair H100i makes in temperatures. Okay, so, just as a real world example, I'm going to render the other project that's already f complete. I'm going to render it in Kaden Live, and I'll also be recording the entire time, and most likely watching YouTube and continuing my typical usage. So here we have a 21 minute and 48 second project. It's ready to render in Kaden Live. I've done a dry run of this before, and I think this is a decent stress test. I'll be capturing my Konki system monitor and piece sensor to display the temperatures in the CPU load. As you can see, the current temperature is 32 degrees Celsius, and the high temp was 
41 degrees Celsius. I'll obviously be speeding this up for the sake of time. Okay, so it took 10 minutes and 47 seconds to render, and we were at a sustained CPU usage of 80 to 85 percent for a majority of the time. I think it even went up to 90 percent for, I don't know how long, but hit 90 percent. That's rendering in Caden Live and capturing with OBS the entire time, and I was watching YouTube videos in the background and doing some, you know, standard web browsing. So that was 80 to 85% utilization on 8 cores. The top temperature reached was only 46 degrees Celsius. Compared to the temperatures that I was getting before, which had a... Gen it Processor's temperature junction is 87 degrees Celsius. I know for a fact that doing this before would have caused a thermal shutdown. With the exception of maybe a fresh boot and going straight to rendering and capturing. I'm completely satisfied with the Corsair H100i V2. The improvement overall has been amazing. The FX8350 is a bit old and the 32 nanometer lithography and the high clock speeds gave it a reputation for running hot to begin with. So not only does this liquid cooler keep the temperatures in safe ranges, it's also improving my performance overall because the CPU will throttle a whole lot less. I'd recommend this to anyone who's using these processors to do heavy workloads or using them in a workstation. Or even if you're just gaming, I think this will definitely show improvements. Again, I'd highly recommend it. It's something I should have bought years ago. The installation, it was pretty straightforward. Um, in my video, it may have seemed a little tricky at times just because of my particular case. But overall, it's an easy installation process. And $130 US dollars, the price I think is justifiable. It's a good investment because you can use this with just about any modern CPU from Intel or AMD, including the new Socket AM4+. Plus. Okay, well that's all folks. Um, I thank you for watching. Please leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Leave a like. And if you did like it, please subscribe because I'll be bringing you more of everything open source and everything tech. I've been Jay. And you've been watching DS Tech Media, and we'll see you in the next one.